Happy Vlogmas part three. I didn't vlog yesterday. I had a rehearsal. We rehearsed for our upcoming Sonora Collective concert that we have in a few days from now. But I don't know if any of you can relate to this, but I'm just like, I'm so annoyed at myself. What? You have an opinion about that? <laughs> I mentioned this in the previous vlog, but I was feeling down about my plane. I don't know, I just think I'm being super hyper critical right now for no good reason. Like everything about myself is annoying me. I feel kind of stuck in a rut and last night I was doing some practicing and just getting frustrated with how I'm sounding. I feel like I'm not gonna be sounding how I wanna sound on Monday. I know I shouldn't already be thinking that. I was editing the previous vlog and I'm just like, oh my God, why am I saying this? Why am I talking like this? Why am I blah, 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 blah. Like just annoying myself, giving myself the ick about myself. So yeah, I don't know if any of you can relate to that, but there's no time to be down and wallowing. I have things to do, don't we, Miguel? But our rehearsal yesterday went pretty well. We don't have another one before the concert, so it's gonna be okay, I think, I hope. We're gonna have a sound check, so we can run some things for tempo then, hopefully. This morning, I just spent a lot of time editing. The rest of the day, I have to do a little teaching, and I really have to practice but I'm trying to think what I can do to just feel a little better. I think I'm gonna take a shower and blow out my hair and put on some makeup. That just might make me feel a little more put together. I'm trying to treat myself compassionately, but it can be really hard. <laughs> it interesting how much more quickly and easily we are able to grant others grace whether it's our students or our friends but some reason it's just really hard to do that for ourselves uh, I just really want to get out of this rut and I don't know how yeah these are some very real practice thoughts you know, like if my student or a friend was struggling playing a passage, 
I wouldn't get so down on them. I would say, try it like this. Did you try it like that? You can do it. Give it one more go. Maybe come back to it later. But for some reason, it's just so much more difficult to speak like that to yourself. I would say I've definitely improved with that, but it's still sometimes just the default. And I think it doesn't help that I spent like seven and a half years in the conservatory environment. Yeah, but trying to be a bit more compassionate with myself. And it's just music. I have to keep reminding myself that it's just music. Nobody's gonna die if I don't sound my best at the concert. Hoping tomorrow will feel a little bit better. Good morning. So I'm feeling a lot more positive today. I taught this morning and a bit of this afternoon. I think that, you know, having to work with my students and speak to them in a kind way, obviously, uh, help them solve problems. And I don't know, I think that that always puts me in a better mind frame. So I'm gonna get some practicing done. It's another really chilly day, so I'm all bundled up and trying to stay cozy. That always just makes the practicing feel a bit better. <laughs> Do you agree? Do you agree with that? Yeah? practicing and I thought that I would take a minute and show you all how I use my iPad for reading music. I've gotten a lot of questions about this topic, about how do I organize the music on it, how do I turn the pages, all of this stuff. And I think it's a big topic so I might make a full in-depth video about this. If you're interested, let me know. But I thought that for now I would just kind of give you a quick overview. I would say that one of the main advantages to using the iPad for reading music is that you can take all of your sheet music that you have that's taking up so much space and have it all on this really thin device. And then the second huge benefit is that you can read from a score when you're performing. And if you don't know what that means, instead of reading from your individual part that only has your part that you're playing, if you're playing in an ensemble, and I'll show you a piece that I'm working on for the concert tomorrow, you'll see that I am going to be looking at this part that has my friend Leah, who's playing the viola line, her part, as well as my part here too. And I can read off of the score and if i was doing this without an ipad someone would have to be turning pages for me because you can see it makes it so much longer right instead of having like two pages that can be put on your stand you have 10 or more and reading from the score is something that is probably always useful just like how a conductor can see everyone in the orchestra's part um but especially in contemporary music where you have things that are just more complicated with the nature of lining things up, of moments where there's a lot of things that are very free going on and it's just depending upon you starting and stopping according to what the other person or people are doing. So in my mind, that's one of the huge benefits. And if you play a lot of contemporary music or if you go to concerts, you might see people that have like three music stands up to put out all of the music that they're playing because they don't have time to turn pages. and you know, I think that it's not super practical. It's obviously more practical to be able to read from the iPad, but it is an investment to, to have an iPad and put your music on here in your music library. It takes a lot of time. But for me, I think that 
the benefits are, are very obvious. And another question that I see popping up a lot in the comments is how do I turn the pages? So this is how I turn pages when I'm performing. And this is something that takes a little bit getting used to. If you're a pianist, you're used to using your foot for a pedal. But if you're not, it takes a bit of coordination to turn pages with this thing and be playing at the same time. So basically this connects to your iPad through Bluetooth. You can see when the blinking light is on, it means it's connected. Honestly, I don't really know what these controls do because I never touch them. I think it might have something to do with how many pages it turns out. I don't know. But really all you need to know is that this means forward and this means backwards. And if you press it too many times, you might turn too many pages. That has happened to me in the past. Um, I could talk about some scary things that have happened. Um, but that's mostly back when I was not used to to using this, but now it's it's pretty easy You just have to coordinate it with your foot and you just have to make sure that it's placed in an area where you can easily Tap the pedal without having to look down sometimes when I'm standing and playing I get a little worried <laughs> that I'm not going to Tap the the pedal and I'm just gonna hit the floor and then I'm not gonna have to turn the page so sometimes I will <laughs> Peer down but I'm trying to get out of that habit but yeah this makes it really easy and there are lots of different um, makers I shouldn't say lots of different makers but there are like a few different brands but this is the one that most of my colleagues use and that I like to use I like how it looks it's just very um, slim and kind of unobtrusive even though it's like a black blinking box that you put on the ground. Of course, I put a little sticker there with glitter because everything has to be cutified. Also, it helps you to identify whose it is because at the end of concerts, sometimes it's like, who took my pedal? And they all look the same. Anyway, I think that, you know, if you are interested in playing contemporary music, definitely something to check out. But of course, if you're not playing contemporary music, it's also so convenient to have the iPad because you don't have to print out a ton of music from IMSLP for example if you don't know what that is it is the um, public domain music library where you can download music that's in the public domain for free and you can download it straight to the iPad and open it with the application and I use Fourscore which is an application that is made for reading music on the iPad or on a tablet. It has a lot of handy ways to organize things. You can organize by composer. You can tell that when you just download it and put it straight into the library, it might have like a crazy IMSLP title with numbers and characters, and then but you can have the option to change that and organize it. You can tell that I need to go through and do that with a lot of my music. But you can then also see that you can create a set list and a set list is basically, you know, if you have a gig, you have a concert, you're working on a specific program, you can put the pieces from that into the program and then when you're in the concert performing, you just pull it up and you can even put it in the order of the program of the concert so that then when you're tapping through, you'll end up on the next piece. There's a lot of ways to customize things also that I don't always probably take advantage of. Like you can change the size of the page to make it a bit bigger if you need to. I think for me, one of my favorite things about the iPad besides the convenience of it and just having access to everything on there is that you can take the pencil if you have the pencil the apple pencil or you can just use your finger and you can write on your music with any color that you want i am super big into highlighting certain things just having that visual cue and you know with your nice Baron writer score the paper you might not want to physically go on there and take a marker to it but on the iPad you can do that and then you can erase it whenever you don't want it anymore and of course things that aren't in the public domain or things that you can't buy as a digital download you can go through your physical sheet music and photocopy it there's apps that you can use as a photocopier i think it definitely takes some getting used to and i have to say that in the beginning i was a little resistant to it because i don't know i don't really love reading from my kindle i kind of like feeling the paper book so the same thing with the sheet music there are things that i still use the paper for just like 
pieces that I have a lot of markings already written in them or things where I don't really have any crazy page turns and I already have the, the paper copy. If I don't have a ton of stuff to carry around and it's not a big deal, I'll just use the paper. But especially for things like where you're playing a gig and they send you a ton of music and they're going to have a copy for you when you get there, like maybe an orchestra concert where they're not going to send you the physical part, they send you the, a digital copy. For something like that, it's so useful because you don't have to waste paper printing out like 40 pages of music and um, you just have it on the iPad. But yeah, if you have any other specific questions about the iPad, put them in the comments and I will write them down and keep track of them for making a more in-depth video. I can also talk about some more of the pros and the cons. Um, yeah, so let me know. I'm also curious to know for you guys that are musicians, if you like to use the physical copy of the paper or if you prefer the digital way. So now, enough chatting, let's do some practice.